Hello, and welcome to the final module of this course in which we'll be talking about data visualization. In this video, I will briefly take you through the theory and the concepts that go behind the visualization. Uh, the first thing that we need to understand is how we look at things. Uh, so in the human brain, there are three kinds of memory, the iconic, the short term and the long term. The iconic is basically there for the wow effect. Uh, it is there to catch a glimpse of anything that is out of the ordinary. Uh, this is where, uh, if you think uh, in terms of uh, uh, communication product, uh, this is where the headline comes in, uh, a report's uh, headline or the report's name comes in. So there are two levels to it. One is the text that is there in it. Uh, so if it is a big number that you can bombard it with, uh, if it is uh, something that is very interesting, so it can be something like a Bollywood star or a Hollywood star, and you can get the name over there. Uh, so that is where iconic uh, brain gets tickled, and part of the brain gets tickled. Then uh, the second part is uh, the short-term memory. Uh, this is basically where the, uh, the introduction to the story, the brief introduction to a report that is, uh, comes in. So over here, they normally say that you, your mind is not going to process more than three to seven chunks uh, of data. So do not put all your information over here. And once the, the end user is glued onto the information, so basically after the secondary, uh, after the uh, short term memory, uh, and it, it gauges and it realizes the content is something that is going to help the individual, then the individual would invest that extra time and, 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 and go through it at leisure. So that is where you would give the detailed information. Uh, if you realize that is how all our reports are also structured, we have uh, the report cover, which has to have uh, a snazzy report name along with a visually attractive cover. Then you have the executive uh, summary or the executive report, which is basically uh, bringing the entire reports, uh, sum total into a page or two. And you also try to put your best foot forward over there. And if the person is interested in it, then you give the detailed uh, description and detailed findings of your report in the subsequent pages. So, uh, so this is, uh, if you look at this graph, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, however, you are unlikely to remember anything out of it. So a good option would have been, would be that you break it down into uh, two distinct, uh, uh, different visual, uh, and that will increase the readability of it and also the recallability of this. Uh, so based on uh, the way the human brain works, uh, there is something called a pre-attentive attribute. The, this is basically the cues uh, which will tickle uh, the different kinds of uh, parts of the brain, uh, especially the first, which is the iconic part of it, and the second, that's the short-term part of it. So the idea is that if the consumer or the end, uh, end user is glued onto your product, they would definitely give that extra, that much extra time. For example, I enjoy uh, photography. So if I am glued to good photographs or, or something that is relevant to photography, then I would definitely put in that extra effort and sit down and read it. So, but if I am not, then comes the tricky part. So over there, you need to have a very, very good photograph to start with an equally interesting storyline to go along with it maybe. And then if all of those things fall in place, then people who are lukewarm to photography or who are who are neutral to photography might actually spend a lot of time reading through the entire entire uh, manual that you have on photography so pre-attentive attribute uh, is basically i'll uh, uh, an example of it is over here so if i were to ask you to read uh, or count the number of fives in this strip of uh, numbers uh, there's a very high chance that even after spending a considerable amount of time, you might leave a few fives out. In contrast, uh, the same strip with uh, a pre-attentive attribute of color, uh, color intensity, you can see the fives distinctly. So similarly, uh, there, these are the popular kinds of pre-attentive attributes that exist. Uh, or these are the, uh, so you have form, under form, you have all of these options. And then you have color. Under color, you have uh, these two options and spatial position. So if you look at it, this 
pre attentive these pre attentive attributes uh, form the basis for all the charts graphs pies uh, that we uh, have uh, or we use in our day to day work uh, so the second part of the story is all of these while all of these stand out or make uh, things stand out uh, all of them have certain limitations in terms of the data types they they work best with for example uh, form or or let's say let's take the example of this uh, spatial position uh, this basically works wonderful when you're dealing with hierarchy within the organization if you want to show the organizational hierarchy or uh, a family tree uh, this works splendidly but if i were to tell you uh, how big or small or how how whether whether uh, uh, the covid 19 uh, cases in different states which states are doing uh, have a higher share uh, so over here, because there's only one point that is going data point that is going down, it is easily understandable. However, if you have all the states over here, it becomes very difficult. In contrast, uh, line length is a better way of going about. But if you were to, uh, to talk about a family tree, a line length would not really come handy. Uh, similar goes with color and hue and uh, color intensity and color hue. So uh, this is a list of uh, the pre-attentive attributes and this is where they actually work so most of these things we are so used to that's the beauty of visualizations and visual uh, cues is that uh, the human mind gets used to a lot of it so we get this right most of the times because uh, we are used to because we've seen so much content which has been developed around it however if you look at it uh, this is a uh, you can see which thing works best for what so for example, uh, quantities, categories, and relations. This is, these are the three things that we've looked at. And uh, the class size, how many numbers can actually be, or how many data points can actually be pumped into this. So if you have a lot of data points, you will definitely avoid using the line pattern because you can't have too many line patterns. So if you have a lot of weightages or a lot of different kinds of things that you want to show, line patterns won't work. Uh, similarly, um, if you have, uh, Pattern in density wouldn't work if you have a lot of information or a lot of different kinds of information that you want to plot. In contrast, uh, for quantities, uh, angles work fine. For quantities, uh, size work fine. This is basically what we use in maps, uh, where we're trying to show which which area is doing well and which area is not. Uh, so based on the pre-attentive attributes, here is a list of all the charts, graphs, spies that we have. Uh, uh, in my experience, uh, I have around six to eight uh, chart types of uh, visualization types out of this, which I use on a regular basis. Beyond them, uh, there would be one or two that I might have used at, at, at different times. So this might look an exhaustive, this is an exhaustive list and you need not know all of them, but it makes sense to go through all of them to realize what works best for the kind of content that you have and what all is available in terms of visualization. Uh, so uh, in 2013, MIT conducted a survey and then they came out with this report, which basically looked at the recall value of different kinds of visualizations. So what they did was they took a, a series of visualizations and they went to people and they asked them to have a look at it. And a day later or uh, later they asked those people to remember the visualization they had looked at. And finally, the ones that most of the people remembered are the ones that have a better recall value. So in that, uh, Grid and matrix basically was uh, had the maximum recall value. So if you have a data uh, set which can fit in this, uh, one classic example of this, and uh, this makes sense. So the first time I had read this, it made a lot of sense. When you're uh, looking at uh, the railways timetable in India, uh, this is the pattern it uses. Uh, and uh, if your content can be plotted in this manner, it might not be a bad idea to do it. Uh, in this particular example that I have over here, if you look at it, they have, uh, it is basically in the grid matrix format. Along with that, it has used the pre-attentive attribute of color. 
to make certain things stand out and certain things fade out. So there would be some weightages to these, uh, which is not visible in this uh, example. Uh, the second most recallable or memorable or, or, or uh, type of visualization was trees and network. Uh, if you can again do that. So this works handy if you're trying to explain a concept uh, or explain a, a, an organization as a hierarchy. So if your content can sit over here, it makes a lot of sense to put it in this way. Uh, the third was basically uh, explanations and these uh, models uh, that you can use to explain concepts. Uh, so uh, this is a down to earth example that we did during the uh, Volkswagen uh, Dieselgate uh, fiasco in 2014. Uh, so what we did uh, was uh, we explained what they were doing through a diagram. Uh, so this diagram has a high recall value and it's a very con con complex uh, process of what they were doing. So it, it teaches how a car works and the, how the engine works and what they basically look, did over here. So uh, along with this, if you look at it, uh, we went ahead with the diagram uh, design and we placed, uh, these are the popular Volkswagen models that were uh, the problem or the, 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 the malpractice was was uh, recorded so we carried on we could have taken the actual photographs of these cars however we thought this would be a better way of showing it uh, so this is the list of the MIT uh, study uh, so what they had done was they made a distinction between uh, visualizations with uh, images in it uh, which is uh, junk charts and ones without uh, images. Uh, so if you look at it, the top three basically remain the same. Uh, and towards the end, there are some changes, but primarily it remains the same. So grid matrix, good. Tree and network, good. Diagrams, good. So diagram without picks go up further because you don't have any visual element. Uh, area is good. Distribution is good. Maps are good. Uh, distribution uh, is over here. Tables are good. Circle, uh, so five and donut charts are good. So basically, depending on the content that you have, try to fix or stick to this. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at the popular infographic templates that are available. Uh, this is a very broad classification that I've done based on the kind of uh, different kinds of uh, infographs that I've seen. Uh, so first is uh, the statistical infographs and graphics. So over here, this is basically uh, number heavy. However, you look at it and you realize that uh, there are a lot of elements over here which will catch your attention. And obviously, it'll take uh, you a lot of time to understand everything that is there on this page exhaustively and properly. But the headline numbers actually come out from here. Uh, this is one of the pages that we published in SOA in Figures in 2016. Uh, so it has a lot of numbers in it. Uh, this is an informational infographics. The beauty of this is that uh, this was uh, an infographic in which we did not have much numbers to play with. So this was a very interesting story that was there. Uh, so there was a report that came out and which basically looked at why the uh, indigenous people across the world, uh, what are the challenges that they face and what is, uh, what is the reason behind it. And if you look at it, these were all very subjective. For, uh, for example, in North America, uh, the Red Indians uh, basically had a high suicide rate and they had a lot high lifestyle diseases and uh, alcohol abuse. And the major reason behind it is because these people are pulled out of uh, their uh, traditional lifestyle and uh, the government in the uh, 70s or 80s uh, tried to mainstream them. So basically, forcefully, they made the... The, the young population get into mainstream schooling and that led to a high suicide rate. Um, in the same way, uh, in, in the case of the Arctic, it was a very different uh, kind of a reason for the health issues that they had. So over there, they have high chronic diseases and high suicide rate. And one of the reasons was that uh, the hospital, the language that is spoken by the hospital officials over there uh, was uh, something that the local tribal population or the indigenous population do not speak. So that was one of the major reasons why people won't go to the hospitals. 
and that led to the that was one of the many reasons that led to health problems over there similarly in africa there were other issues hiv aids is one of the major issues over there in pacific there's something else so if you look at it it was a very qualitative kind of information that was there in the report but we wanted to have some pieces of numbers along with it to make it uh, attractive uh, so what we did we looked at the life expectancy of all of these places uh, we also looked at the uh, total indigenous population and the major groups over there so if you look at it even without these uh, the main message hold true holds true however this was used to give a, a, a visual relief and also numbers usually have a, a, a good recall value so that was primarily the reason why we had it over here as well we added up all the numbers and we gave how many, how much is the population and a lot of other information along with it uh, this is a timeline infographics basically a timeline the, the 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 top part of it is basically the timeline part of it uh this is one of the examples there are better examples available as well but this is how a timeline basically looks like this was part of the uh, Volkswagen uh, cover story that we had done in 2014 uh and then you have a process infographic uh, this is basically a, an infograph which is describing uh, how to make an infograph so and then you have maps or geographic infographics this is another example that we did uh, this was in 2016 that we did an oil spill uh, if you look at it again over in in this particular example there is hardly any number but still it's the a very powerful visualization uh, and this is uh, a comparative infographic this is a very interesting uh, uh, Kind of visualization that we were able to come up with so in the original format when it was published in the magazine uh, uh, the idea was that it was part of the cover story so basically this was the time when uh, a lot of the uh, backward uh, castes in india who were traditionally well to do because they were landed uh, people they never wanted to be a part of the uh, reservation system how they started demanding for reservations uh, this was again in uh, 2016 so over there we looked at all of these uh, different casts and we wanted one page was given to each of these so we wanted the infograph in such a way that they could be comparable even though when you look at it in uh, closely you see a lot of numbers are different because it was very difficult to uniform it however the use of the icons uh, and the way it has actually been laid out uh, in the first go it looks as if these are all uniform so this was uh, this is basically comparative infographics uh, subsequently we had put it together so every page had this in uh, the gutter one column was given to each one of uh, these on each page so you could just flip through and there was a sense of continuity so that was the idea behind it um, and then finally you have uh, interactive inter infographics this is basically what we will be learning extensively uh, in uh, Microsoft Power BI and uh, Data Wrapper. Uh, so uh, all of these can easily be done in uh, uh, Microsoft Power BI. However, uh, I'll eat the word easily. Uh, the, all of these are doable in, 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 in Microsoft Power BI. Uh, and at the same time, they will remain interactive. So how... Uh, we go about uh, in uh, our organization is uh, that uh, after we've done the flow charting process and then we have done the basic analysis and we have basically uh, cleaned up the data and we've brought it down to uh, a, a comparable or a, or, a, or a smaller level and we know what it is that we want to see right now or show right now we come up with something called a sketching process again this is a very uh, uh, basic but a very powerful tool uh, so what we normally do is we take a piece of paper and uh, we try to sketch out exactly how the final product would look uh, instead of directly jumping onto a software uh, and spending hours over there uh, this is what we do the other thing that many of you might be facing in uh, your organization it is a common problem in uh, non-profits is that they have uh, one or two designers or they outsource the designing work 
and uh, they send their entire content to the designer and the final product that the designer does is not in tune with what you had in mind. That is primarily because you've given them the raw data and they've visualized it and they might be good at visualization and design sense, but they don't understand the content. Uh, so the author is the only person who properly understands the content. So over here, if you look at it, I try to recreate exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, this is basically a headline. So my designer, he knows how I work. So we work in tandem. Uh, this is basically an intro and what he gets out of it is that I need a deepish intro. I need multiple lines over here. So I have something concrete to say or something substantial to say. Uh, then I need a table over here. So when I'll be sending him the raw data, I'll be indicating that this is basically what uh, the table should be made out of. So travel preferences would go over there. Then this is basically, I want two big numbers to be highlighted. Uh, so this is the number and the text along with it. And uh, this is basically an image. If possible, I also tell him the kind of image that I have in mind. Uh, and then there is another headline and intro on the second page. And finally, there are individual uh, units, Bhopal, Delhi, Chennai, Jaipur. And there is a line graph along with it and there is an intro along with it. So this is uh, the sketching that I normally do. And the idea is to keep it as true to the final product as, as, as possible. And then uh, this is what we made out of it. Uh, so a deepish intro and uh, the headline that went along with it. And this was uh, because of, uh, this was part of the book that we uh, published, State of India's Environment in Figures 2016. So basically this is a book which only has infographics uh, on different different points. So every for every page we 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 do this. Uh, so and the advantage of this is that you save a lot of time eventually. So uh, this is the final product that we came out with. Uh, there are a, a few things that I would want to point out before uh, we conclude this video, and these are things that. Uh, are universal and should always reflect in any form of visualization that you do. Uh, first is that uh, try to keep small units. If you look at any of any visualization that we do, all of these units are independently complete. So if I were to uh, uh, just read this much, it will tell you something. If I were to just read this much, it will also give you some insight. Similarly, this number on its own is basically saying, telling something 49.7 million people either travel or cycle to work in the zero to five kilometer bracket. Uh, similarly, all of these things are doing that. So the reason why we do this is primarily. Uh, so this infograph on its own, if I put it on uh, any social media platform, I don't think anybody would read it because it has too much information in it. Now, if I break this down and I only release this much of it and I just tweak the intro to be a little more sharp or I break this down and I carry this independently or this number independently, then it is basically going to have more readership. Alternatively, based on this one uh, fact sheet that we released, uh, we can have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, six different entry points in uh, the uh, on social media. So this is something that we always do. So how we go about is always with the headline, we give an intro and the headlines should not usually read. So this is an exception over here, uh, but they should not basically read percentage share of blind, blind, blah, which is basically what you, we do in uh, most of our PPTs and all. Um, it should give you an idea low on numbers. Uh, how Indians travel to work rather than uh, so over here uh, we have Bhopal and, and, and then the intro has to give an idea of what, what, what uh, we are going to talk about. So that is something that you'll see in all examples that we, we, we will see. So we have losers and winners and then an intro and then again a headline and an intro in a way uh, or over here. Uh, there's a big intro so all the things that go along for the entire page. This basically works for that. And all the individual units also have the same thing. So this is another example where we are also using pre-attentive attributes to make things stand out. 
and we have a lot of text. So if you look at it, there's a lot of information over here. However, it does not look very, very difficult to navigate through. So it is not very intimidating. So this is something that you have to be very careful about. So the heavy text is, is in black and small font. Uh, these are bold the, to highlight the things. Uh, same as the case over here. Uh, even if you were to read only about North America, it will be a complete story in itself. Or for that matter, even if you were to read only the major health issues of any of these continents, it will be a complete story in itself. However, when you read the entire fact sheet, it gives a bigger, bigger picture, which we have written over here. So this is this amount of structuring is basically very important. And you can again break them down and you can release them on social media individually if you uh, are interested in that. Because on its own, this is a lot of information for social media. Uh, maybe just the map with the uh, individual life expectancy is a good way to go about. So uh, try to keep it simple, uh, try to keep it relevant and uh, avoid too much information in your visualizations. 